On today's episode of Fly Hacks, I'm going to be showing you a way around some disadvantages of bead chain, hourglass, and lead eyes while tying a fly called the fluffy headed wiggle nugget. There's not always a problem with lead eyes or hourglass eyes. Sometimes there is. When you're tying a wool-headed fly, there's a big lump where your eye is. You want to tie it behind and in front of the eye. You end up with a little gap over that hump because you can't tie wool on top of the eyes or else it'll make it all weird and gross looking. If you use bead chain eyes, they don't add enough weight to the fly to get it down where you want it to go. The solution to this is by using beads. This hook is a TMCO 5212, this is a size six, and I'm using 150 denier white Vivas GSP. We're just gonna cover the, the hook with some thread here and then end up about here on your fly. And this is where the front of the eyeball is going to be, ish. We're gonna make like a four inch dubbing loop that we're not gonna use for dubbing, but it's all the same. You're gonna tie back about four millimeters because that's about the size of the bead that we're using. We're gonna use, let's say 3.3 millimeter black tungsten bead. And I'm gonna go with the skinny side of it. You can do this either way. Uh, I'm gonna go with the skinny side and I'm gonna make this dubbing loop I'm gonna make this dubbing loop into a point. And I'm gonna to try to thread this. You can use a bobbin threader as well. I don't. I don't know why I should. I have one sitting right next to me. So you're just gonna wrap that on. Uh, make sure that you put a couple wraps on that GSP. Now go back with the GSP back behind this bead again because again, this is the back side of your bead and the front side of your bead is gonna end up being right there. So we're gonna get another bead and do the same thing. And come around the front of the beads here and wrap it again. You're gonna take this tag end and go in between the eyes and tie it in right behind the eyes again. And I'm gonna go to the end of my thread here. Now I'm not gonna cut this off just yet. Um, when we tighten the beads together, it'll pull some of the thread through. So if we cut this off, then we'll have a tag end somewhere in there somewhere and it'll make the wraps behind it loose. So now I'm gonna just wrap around the two eyes here. Just a few times, get it nice and tight and squish them together. Then we're gonna take two wraps through the middle and then two wraps through the middle on the other side. Now we can cut this off. Now you can glue these eyes in there. I don't typically glue them because I lose the fly before uh, I have a chance to for it to fall apart. So next, Senyo's laser dub, hot pink. You're gonna tie with two colors of laser dub. One's going to be on the top of the fly, one's going to be on the bottom because when you fish it, it's actually gonna flip over and be correct. So I grab a lump of dubbing here and I'm just gonna pinch the ends. I'm gonna pull it apart and then I'm restacking Pulling it apart, restacking. Now you're gonna do that a whole bunch just to make sure your uh, fibers are all lined up and go in the same direction. So I'm gonna take a chunk of this off. And I'm gonna tie it in up here on top. Just two wraps. If you make three wraps, it'll be too wide. And when you trim it, you'll see gaps in between the, the lumps of dubbing. Next, tan, laser dub, dark tan. Uh, and this is gonna be the back of my fly here. And we're gonna tie that in on the bottom. And again, we're just using two wraps. And you're gonna kind of spread these out. Then you're gonna fold the dubbing back over itself here. And 
And then you're gonna continue this process. All right, I had to readjust the camera there. It's taking up too much of the screen. Now the dubbing is already starting to fill this gap between the eyes. It's starting to push through there. So I'm gonna add one more tuft of laser dub and I'm gonna put it right between his eyes and it's gonna push through to the front. This will help alleviate that gap. See how pushed in it is? You can't even really see the eyes anymore but it's gone in the middle there. Next, since we've got this going over the front or over the top, we're gonna go, we're gonna start again on the bottom side of the hook here and start with the tan. So we're gonna do this backwards of what we did it the first time. And I use a kind of big tuft here because when you, when you jump in front of the eyes from the back, there's this big gap there and I wanna fill that gap. So I'm gonna use a little bit bigger of a tuft than I've been using. And the same goes in front of the eyes, because there's a tiny little gap there. I want to make sure I've got that covered, because this front dubbing will go in between the eyes as well. Whoa, hey, easy dubbing. Okay, now we're gonna spread that out again. Wrap it backwards or pull it back. a couple wraps and that'll do it I'm gonna do one more thing here and you'll see it's just a fluffy mess right now that's good so we're gonna take this uh, tan laser dub and we're gonna make a dubbing noodle I'm gonna wrap this in front. See that, um, that's good right there. Cool. Now when the, the dubbing's pushing forward, so when you trim it, it'll actually have this V notch in it where the, uh, the dubbing is more fluffy and less tied in. So now when I whip finish this, I'm gonna whip finish it and crowd the eye on purpose. You see how I crowded the eye there? So now the eye is half covered and I've crowded it. What I'm gonna do is grab all this dubbing, grab my GSP and just pull it back toward the point of the hook and it tightens and pushes all that thread back into the fly. That way it stays hidden. So now I'm gonna cut my GSP off. Now I'm not gonna close my scissors. I'm just gonna push the V of the scissors into the GSP and it'll cut that GSP off. Now that we're done here, it is time to trim. First thing we need to do is find the hook point, which is somewhere in here. It's right there. I just poked myself with it. We're gonna cut this, uh, the brown part back, and just kind of work our way down to that point. That's where you can see it. There you go, now it's sticking out a little bit there. That's good, that's what you want. You just want, a, when a fish gra comes and grabs that thing, uh, you just want it to poke it. This is nice and soft, so it'll, it'll drive that hook point in there. Uh, next, you want to trim the, get the profile right. So we're gonna trim down the sides to where those eyes stick out. Next step in the trimming process, we're gonna remove this big thing here and we're gonna cut really close to those eyes. So I'm gonna start off with an angle like that. And then I'm gonna work my way down. And you don't want to change that angle too much because there's a third step here. The fly is going to be swimming in this fashion. So what we're gonna do is trim this down to where it looks like it's got a belly.
Keep making little tiny cuts. Don't dig into this too much. You don't want to end up with just a piece of dubbing wrapped around a hook. All right, now it's fairly close to what we're looking for. And now all we're gonna do is trim that up to make it look like a fish. And there we are. All trimmed out and happy. Thank you for watching this episode of Fly Hacks. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the fluffy headed wiggle nugget is a really fun fly to tie. I didn't actually go into this episode to tie that fly. Uh, it was just a hack for using beads as eyes. So look for a new video soon of the Hail Mary, which is in reply to Dave's request of tying more easy midges.